I built a modern mansion in hardcore Minecraft. Actually, let's try something new. 742 days. That's how long I've been living in this cramped, musty basement. It wasn't always like this. I used to have a small cottage home that I stole, or rather, inherited, from the villager that owned it before me. But then, the sheep came. They were evil, relentless creatures, but I did what I could, trapping them in a pen. But in the process, my home was lost. I sought refuge in the only place I could, the old cellar of a nearby building. I had to make the most of what little space I had, lining the walls with chests and barrels to hold all my possessions. At that moment, I didn't have many, but over time, the world around me expanded, and so did my wealth. I constructed farms of all shapes and sizes across the land, some proving to be more useful than others, but each contributed to my now overwhelming amount of items. My ender chest, filled with shulker boxes. My barrels, shulker boxes. Even my floor is made of shulker boxes. I can't keep living like this. But if everything goes according to plan, I won't have to. So what is my plan? You see, there's this rich real estate guy on YouTube who's doing a live tour of this fancy modern mansion today. It'll tell you everything you need to know. And while you guys are getting caught up, I'm going to work on finding a way to befriend these sheep. Nice sheepy sheepy. Welcome back everyone, I'm Rich Real Estate Guy. The building you see behind me is a brand new modern mansion. It has 27 rooms, a four car garage, a tennis court, and two swimming pools. It was constructed on a beautiful 16,000 square block lot along the coast of this stunning ocean. The construction was completed in 200 days by a solo master builder who has chosen to remain anonymous. When asked why, the builder said, quote, everything is awesome, before wandering off. An interesting character, but that's more than enough background information, let's begin our tour. So starting with the exterior here, the property is surrounded by a white concrete and glass wall, perfect for keeping out sheep and sheeple. The main gate opens up to a massive parking lot that branches off to a pedestrian pickup drop-off location along the main walkway. The walkway, surrounded by beautiful azalea bushes, splits off, one path wrapping around the side of the mansion and the other to our main entrance here. Approaching the entrance, there are two fountains on either side of the walkway and a covered porch area with outdoor seating. Now let's head inside. Going through the oversized sliding glass door, we enter our foyer. Foyer? Take your pick. It's a double tall room open to the second floor above, with dark oak plank cutouts on the ceiling. Our main feature in this room is the netherrack powered fireplace, set into the wall. It's surrounded by white couches and makes for a relaxing lounge area, complete with a winding bookshelf made of deep slate tile. Moving on through here, we enter our main hall that spans from the front of the mansion all the way to the back. To the left, we have our main staircase, and a perfect elevator. Don't question it. To our right, we see the main dining area, with a quartz dining table on a slab of the finest smooth basalt, and a raised ceiling with hanging lighting. Quartz is an excellent material for seating because it's harder than steel. Off to the side, we have our bar, for juice. It's a juice bar. Before moving on, we'll take a quick look into this doorway which leads to another foyer between our garage and main walkway. This one with a comfy corner couch and stained glass coffee table facing a painting. It's not a flat screen TV. Or is it? Moving into the garage, you'll see some rich guy cars and coming over to the garage doors, I'll demonstrate that they're fully functional. Just like me. <laughs> Let's head back through the dining area and into our kitchen. In the kitchen, we'll find additional seating with a window view of the ocean. The charcoal gray kitchen counters are nicely complemented by the stripped dark oak backdrop and chocolate bar cabinets. Through these doors is our walk-in freezer, aka the meat closet. Not to be confused with the meeting closet, 
which may or may not exist. In the corner of this room, another door takes you to our first spare room. Turns out, 27 rooms was too many for the master builder to fill, but it's always nice to have that extra space in case you need it. Going back through our kitchen and through the back door, we step out onto the patio. And the view here is just amazing. In front of us is the swimming pool, with integrated frog lights and nothing but a layer of glass separating it from the ocean. In the center of the pool, we have our outdoor fireplace, a really unique feature. Stepping back inside, we'll come back through our dining room and into our grand room. This area here is the outer grand room. It's a double tall room that's visible from the second floor. It serves as our entrance to the inner grand room, where our glass floor leads come us to on. our home theater. What's it gonna be, you heartless balls of fluff? Cake? Apples? Mutton? You like Probably mutton? should have turned that off. Anyways, on either side of our TV, we have waterfalls flowing down into the floor that add a nice touch to the otherwise minimalistic room. Passing through the dining room for a final time, we'll venture down this hallway here. On our right is a secondary staircase leading up to the second floor. Ignoring that for now, we'll move into the next room, which is the juice making room. And, well, need I explain? Next up, we have a smaller outdoor area, which again overlooks the ocean, a perfect place to stop for a bit of fresh air. Further down the hallway and to our right, we'll find four guest rooms each having a nearly identical arrangement with a sleek modern bed, coral carpet, a painting, and a spacious bathroom. And not to forget, the potted azalea tree adds a unique touch of life to each room. Rounding the corner here, our hallway opens up to our second entrance, and outside, an expansive cobbled deep slate terrace with outdoor seating. This is where the pathway we saw earlier leads to. Going back inside, directly in front of us is our indoor gym, fully kitted with a bench press, exercise mats, a punching bag, and a treadmill. I demonstrate, but I already got my workout in this morning. The hallway wraps around to the other side, where we have our second wing of guest rooms, with the same setup as the other ones, so no need to waste our time touring those. Moving along, a second patio oversees the front yard, and we've returned to our main hallway. We'll go ahead and take the elevator up to the second floor. Not sure if that would pass a safety inspection, but at least the obsidian is there to catch you if you fall. Obsidian is actually softer than quartz, so it's surprisingly good at breaking your fall. And the occasional lake. Anyway, on our right, the stairs continue spiraling up to the rooftop, and a glass railing allows us to peer down at the foyer below us without falling to our death. A nice touch. Moving on, we enter our entertainment room, which has a pool table, fancy shelves, a cool bookcase, and a television. What about wheat? Oh. Oh, now we're in business. Sorry about that. Just outside, we have our balcony overlooking the pool and the ocean. And just look at that sunset view. Back inside and through this door, we have the master bedroom, with a raised ceiling, a king-size bed, with a headboard that spans the entire wall. On the other side of the room, another lounge area. On the side opposite of where we came in, the room opens up to another hallway, and another balcony with views of the parking lot below. Down this side of the hallway, we'll find two rooms. One a spare room, and the other was the master builder's storage room. On the other end, we'll find another spare room and our bathroom. In the corner sits a smooth quartz jacuzzi tub, a bath mat, smooth quartz countertop, and sink. You didn't see anything. And nothing quite says I'm rich like relieving yourself into a toilet made of solid gold. Flush is nice too. Moving back out toward the elevator, we'll find a hallway that wraps around the outer grand room below. Again, a glass railing for safety reasons. On one side, we have our second staircase we saw earlier. And next to that, our final spare room. On the other side, we have another balcony and a hallway leading to our trophy room, with frog light lit display cases for anything we might want to show off. Kind of like a personal museum of sorts. On the floor, a glowstone arrangement surrounded by a royal red carpet and on the ceiling, the most unique feature, space for a massive 8x8 map. Using level 3 maps here would display a 64 million block area, and this tiny dot here is what the mansion would look like. Two sliding glass doors lead us to a larger terrace above the second entrance. And now it's time for the roof. I'll opt for the stairs this time, because I happen to like my legs intact. A glass wall encases one side of the staircase, extending nearly the entire height of the mansion. At the top of the stairs, we have a small foyer, 
and a sliding glass door that leads outside. To our right are some lounge chairs that are as soft as snow. And to our left, some umbrella-shaded tables across from an outdoor juice bar. Along the back side of the roof are three canopies providing shade for our additional outdoor seating. And just up these court stairs is our rooftop swimming pool, made of polished andesite and lit by frog lights. On the other end of the pool is an identical staircase and a tennis court. A rooftop probably isn't the best place to play a sport with a bouncing ball, but um, it's fine. Just bring extra balls. And that pretty much concludes... <laughs> what a chump. Gets me every time. Oh yeah, come check out my new mansion. I've added a couple things since I took the place over. Of course, I had to add a hidden passageway behind my bookshelves. Such a classic. And completely automatic. Then, coming down to the garage... Just check out my new cars. That guy barely mentioned them in the tour. If I just hop in the blue one, it's so fast that it takes you straight to the end dimension. Pretty convenient. And I even thought of the perfect use for this glass floor. I'm going to build an right below it.